Welcome everyone to Films with the Women in My Life. My name is Brennan and joining me tonight is Jess. Hey guys. And my girlfriend Nicole. Good evening. And tonight we will be reviewing our first Tyler Perry film. Uh, no, it's Woo-hoo. not one of the Medea movies. <laughs> it's not one, one of, of my 50... sweet spots. What is it? Sweet oh, your spot. sweet spot. Yeah, horror movies and Tyler Perry movies. You're... Yeah, I don't... <laughs> Uh, anyway, we're reviewing tonight acrimony, uh, or as Jess pronounces it incorrectly, acrimony. Um, <laughs> it's not it's not spelled that way, <laughs> or even close. Um, so this is streaming right now on Amazon Prime. It stars Taraji P. Henson, um, and the I guess her co-star is Lyric Bennett. Uh, sorry, Lyric Bent. Uh, I think most people will know Taraji P. Henson from. Empire currently, but she's been in movies and TV shows for a long time. Uh, what do you guys think of when you think of Taraji P? What's your go-to? I like her. <sighs> I think she's really talented, and she definitely gets the message across. I think she usually plays one character, which is the sassy one, and I think she does it very well. Yeah. What do you What do you think, Nicole? <laughs> I better not say my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I know you're not a. F- fan per se she, she changed my opinion on her when she got herself into the media a couple years ago leave it at that <laughs> uh-huh uh so I, I noticed neither of you named any movies or tv <laughs> shows she actually is in uh when i think of her i think of her from the movie hustle and flow uh have you guys seen no probably not i don't think movie, so. i've so. heard of it <laughs> She she plays Suge. She's you know the song "It's Hard Out There for a Pimp." Yes. Or hard out here for a pimp. So in the movie, she does the the that part, the the chorus part. That uh, you know, it's hard out here for a pimp. I bet that was really that good. I mean, that's that's my favorite role of hers, and that was you know 15 years ago. Um, I haven't seen as much as what she's been in lately. I've I've never seen Empire, but um, her co-star in this movie either. But I did see um, What Men Want recently. Yes, that is a very just movie. Oh, how was that? Did you like that? I, I learned what men want. <laughs> Did you? Is it Taraji? <laughs> is, yeah. is that what they want? Is I whatever that three, movie told you? I brought a three by five card so I could just, you know, write down some notes and. <laughs> Uh-huh. You gotta print them out and sell them. <laughs> <laughs> I got all the answers, guys. <laughs> So um, her co-star Lyric Bent, uh, he is in a bunch of stuff I don't know other than three of the Saw movies, um, and also the TV series She's Gotta Have It. She's a he's a main in that. That's based off the Spike Lee movie of the same title from the eighties. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and guess you guys had never seen or heard of him before. I've though. never even heard of that show. Yeah, no. neither have I. I'm looking at his IMDb, and I don't see anything I really know besides CSI Miami, which I haven't watched. I don't want to actually recognize. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so they're the two stars. The only other person in here people would know is Ajoina Alexis. Um, she actually plays the younger version of Cookie. Taraji she can't character call her and... Cookie in this. <laughs> She's not what? a cookie in this. No, she plays the younger version of Cookie in in Empire. Oh, oh that's what I was gonna say. Is she, this is not the first time she's played Taraji <laughs> oh P God, Henson's this younger my version of everything because I had no idea. No, I wasn't trying to call her Cookie as her own. <laughs> I was trying to say, like I was trying, I was building up to the. Oh, she's actually. Oh, she's been her double before. So this she's. All right. Well. <laughs> anyway, so she's the younger Taraji P in this, um, and. <laughs> That's pretty much everyone you know. Everyone else is kind of a no name. So uh, before we get into uh, the movie and you know spoil it, uh, I'll go over the plot, give uh, the way we rate our movies here, and we will get into it. So the summary of Acrimony is a faithful wife played by Taraji B Henson, tired of standing by her devious husband played by Lyric Bent, is enraged when it becomes clear she has been betrayed. That is that's all they kind say. Kind of what happened. That is the, that is, well, I, you know, I, I look up a couple different summaries, try to find ones that are, you know, a couple sentences long. This is what I found, and um, <laughs> I guess that's kind of accurate. Um, I, I so, could say there's probably a little more substance to that. 
Yeah, that's like 30% of it. And I don't even know. Honestly, I don't even know if I agree with their take on it. But we'll get into that. So um, how we rate things here at Films with the Women in My Life is on four criteria. And that is the plot, the characters, the visual and sound, and the overall resonance and feel of the movie. So, uh, um, Nicole, since you picked this movie, uh, what did you think of the plot? Okay, um, so I chose this movie based solely on scrolling through Amazon Prime and watching a few trailers, and the trailer looked really good, so I was like, all right, we'll give this one a shot. Not one for Tyler Perry movies, I just think of the the Medea Boo or whatever the fuck it is, and I'm not, it's not for me, so uh, this one looked different, so I'm like, all right, let's go for it. And I think within 10 minutes or so of Brendan and I watching this movie, (laughs) like, what the fuck is this? I had a feeling that was going to be your guys' impression. So that's the... We looked at each other with, like, raised eyebrows, like, what is this corny-ass thing right now? (laughs) So, uh... Oh, sorry, go ahead. It's okay. My my rating is a 2.5 for this plot, um... Only because, as we'll discuss later, uh, emotion my emotions flip flop throughout this that leave me a little bit uh, like invested. Um, that's all I can say right now before we get into it more. But uh, it wasn't it wasn't the, the best. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, uh, Nicole, you picked this. Jess, I think you're the only one who's seen this before, correct? <laughs> yep, I watched it in theaters. Yes, good. I'm back in the in the wild west of the movie pass days. Um, uh, God bless her soul. <laughs> yeah, for, for about a, for about ten months there, that was you know we crushed the movies every day. But uh, oh, yeah, that was uh, the best ten months of our life. <laughs> it never got better. <laughs> so, uh, what did you think of the plot, Jess? So, I think first, kind of starting into it, Tyler Perry movies should probably get their own rating system because you know they're gonna have. Poor we're qualities. Grading, we're grading on a curve. Yeah, it, it should be curved because <laughs> it's just the way that they are. Like, you're not going into it thinking you're going to see a quality movie with like no holes or gaps oh, in the maybe film. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but that's kind of like the charm of it. Like, you kind of know what you're going to expect. And for me, I like going to Tyler Perry movies because the whole audience just cracks up or like gets really involved in it. And I think I like the feel and the energy of just, like, the ridiculousness of the movie and then everyone's reaction to it. Um, so I'm going to give the plot, eh, I don't know, it was hard to say between a 3 or a 3-5. Oh, God. But I'm just going to say 3-5 <laughs> just because I know that you guys are going to hate it a lot, so I'm just going to try it. <laughs> yeah, we, we got to have, you got to be the champ. I mean, I, I got beaten down on Eternal Sunshine, so you're the champion of this movie. Yeah, I mean. so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it up. Um... So I liked how the plot went. (laughs) I liked how the plot um, has a really good measure of before, middle, and present. So you get to like move through the characters as they were like babies in college, and you have a really good granular story of everything. So you feel what Melinda's feeling, and you understand the characters really, really well inside and out. I think that's one thing they did well in the plot. but yeah, there is ridiculousness. I think the end, when I was in theaters, was just like, all right, this is just far-fetched, but you kind of know where <laughs> that's going to go. So, yeah, that, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, so um, I, I think why Nicole picked this one originally is I, I think most people know Tyler Perry's reputation for the Medea movies, which are that ridiculous, kind of nonsensical, but you go in and you're going to laugh at the, you know, the nonsense of it all. Um, and I'm sure, you know, I'm, I am not a, a black viewer, but maybe, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe that really speaks to the, you know, the community as far as, uh, you know, maybe, maybe Medea is a relatable character. Maybe that's a grandma or mother figure (laughs) that is really, I don't know. Just, you're the only one here who's any part black. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't have any Medeas in my family, but I feel like we have June instead. Mama G. Oh Lord, I don't want. I I'd rather have Medea. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm gonna give this plot. Oh Lord, maybe like a a two. I mean, <laughs> it, it's 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 it, laughably that's fair because again, this isn't known for having a well thought out plot. No, and that's I guess I, I going into this, I was expecting not quality, but it, it's a it's. 
it's advertised as a drama thriller, as something more serious than the average or most known Tyler Perry movies. And I know he was actually a playwright for a long time before the Medea movies got big. So he has, like, this kind of feels like a play. So he has some background in something more serious. It is a laughably absurd plot, and motivations make almost no sense to me. And right, we'll get into it, it now. It definitely has the overheightened uh, drama of a play in it. It does. It does feel like a play at certain parts, and I think that's, you know, and especially the way all the setting here. There's like four, for a movie that spans so much time, there's like five settings. Um, so we start with Melinda, who is in a therapist's office right after we see her, we see her briefly in court. Uh, she has a restraining order against her, uh, against her ex-husband, Robert. Um, and she's talking to the therapist, and, you know... I think this even in this scene, Nicole was already being like, "Oh, I know she is. It all started. Take me back to the beginning." <laughs> so already yeah, we start. There's this, so much drama already set in the setting right there. Already, it's yeah, it's kind of like oh, it all started, and then we flash back to uh, the beginning of college where we see young, we see young Melinda, and oh my god, we get some laughably bad dialogue, just absurdly bad. Like, uh, I, I, it was, I remember because it was raining that night. I I hate the rain. It makes me think. What did she say? It made me think. It was so stupid. I don't remember exactly what she said, but the writing is just absurdly bad. And at this point, I'm I'm actually liking it because I'm laughing so much. I'm like, maybe it'll be like a, maybe it'll be like a so bad it's good. Maybe I'll like really like it by the end because it's so absurd. Um, and we get, you know, Melinda meets Robert. Um, Melinda's mom dies pretty quickly. And Robert and her have sex for the first time. Melinda's first time. And she blames and... him for having sex with her at her mom's funeral. But we know. Because she was, like, vulnerable and stuff. But she was clearly consenting. Let's just say that. Right. Yeah, She. so that's the thing is, we're. It. this is where it's very conflicting because we get... The the pre- the flashback here doesn't seem hesitant at all. She seems totally fine about it. But then the whole movie, we hear this crazy voiceover from present day Taraji P Henson, present day Melinda, and she's just like, "How could he take advantage of me?" And at this point, I'm like, "All right, I'm on, I'm on the other guy. I'm on the guy's side. Like, why is like she sounds crazy right now? Like, I don't know. What did you guys think of the, the the characters at this point, this early stage? Well, that's where I brought in my my high rating of a two point five for the plot because um, <laughs> they did give you that beginning sense of him being the victim, and then later on we will get into why you feel like she's the victim, and then it comes back to him, the victim. Like It plays with your emotions that way that d- that does leave this movie a little bit enjoyable, because you're like, oh, what should I feel? Who should I feel for? Who's, who's wrong here? So at this point, I am interested in these characters as well. So, uh, are we rating the characters? Uh, yeah, why don't we rate the characters? I mean, they're the two main characters. We get the past thems and the present thems, and then everyone else is pretty small. I mean, I, g- I guess we'll get the, the mistress in a little bit, and the, the sisters and their husbands, but they're they're not as big right now anyway. What, what do you give the yeah, characters? A, a two. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, when we learn about what the, the husband's life ha- goal has been, and like how shitty of a guy he is, I I don't I don't like it. Um, I just can't imagine that somebody lived like this her whole life. She you you learn that she had like three hundred and fifty thousand dollars from her mother's passing, and she goes and just blows all of it on him, and he has nothing to offer her. And uh, you know I that, I didn't care for that that much. She's fucking psycho. I guess she, pl- I guess she played that well. I don't know, but at the same time, we were laughing, like we said, because <laughs> the voiceover was so corny and it was like so over the top for no reason. The writing on the voiceover was really poor. Yeah. I, I have to say, uh, I mean, the, some of the character dialogue is it's a it's cheesy and corny, but the oh, the voiceover and it's constant. It's every thirty seconds. It's so much. It's overbearing. Um, but, uh, Je- Jess, what did you think of up to this point? What do you got the- for the characters? So, I gave it a three. Um, I think the love story between them is something 
probably more common than you would think. Like the woman works really hard and has you know has two jobs, is hustling, and the guy's just kind of lazy, like sitting around. I, th- I don't know. I think that's not kind of relatable, and it happens more often than it should. Um, so I'm on team Melinda. <laughs> I love her rage. Um, I think that's just what. The whole time you're on Team Melinda for like beginning to end, at no point do you switch allegiances. Um, I mean, I'm t- when she killed everyone. Okay, I can't be on Team Melinda. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can be. I've I've been on Team Kill People in movies before, not this particular <laughs> one. But I mean, if 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 you think it was justified, I mean, uh... her rage is justified. I would probably be very very angry at the very end, like she was. Um. But no, I was on Team Melinda, but majority of the time. I can't wait to get into that yeah. later. <laughs> and let's see, Robert, I like, I think he's a really good actor. I think he played his part really well because he did seem sympathetic and caring, but he also was lazy and self-centered. And he did those two things really well together intertwined. Yeah, so I'm, I think the characters for me are, well, the two characters are at least interesting. Uh, I'm going to go 2-5 because... Melinda is an interesting character, but she to me she doesn't really make a lot of sense. She's kind of I mean, I guess if the at the end you're saying, okay, she was kind of crazy the whole time, then yeah, I guess she it, she's crazy, so her actions don't have to make sense. It's all over the place. But I mean, she was the breadwinner for a really long time. She had to have some head on her shoulders, but she kind of seems crazy and all over the place for the most time and I don't understand her motivations all the time yeah, it's still justified um, Robert, because she's put her heart and soul into this guy she can't just give up on him like um i mean yeah it, what we learn in I the guess. flashback is that he cheated on her um one night and that's where all of her rage starts she <laughs> freaking drives her jeep into his camper i know <laughs> and, and then she had to get like hysterectomy from that so that kind of like kind of sets it like more her so life is ruined say with in him. her eyes for sure. Yeah. So yeah, that's so that's the next part is that after Melinda starts spending money on Robert, well, this is still in the way way flashback when they're young. Um, he doesn't she he doesn't return her calls. Uh, he's dodging her. She goes to his trailer and sees that he's having sex with another woman, and she rams her car into the trailer multiple <laughs> times until it flips over. And then she is yelling at him, and he comes out with you know shirt off, and the woman's like all like frazzled, and she's like, "You didn't tell me you had a girlfriend," and and the and and then she passes out, goes to the hospital, and and oh, the girl, you burst it out laughing here when she was like, um, but she's like, the, she's like, the doctor said I had internal bleeding, <laughs> and even worse, my, my ovaries it were my, my what was it my ovaries. Uh, my, <laughs> It ruptured my over just the way she the, the see, voiceover you have said to it. Be you in the audience because if if you're like in the movie theater and you and like the car ran to the trailer, everyone's like just laughing and just up in arms and just shouting stuff. And it's I don't know. I think that part's fun. See, I think I agree with you there. Up to this point, I'm like, this is like maybe it's so bad it's good. This is so so stupid and over the top that I kind of I'm kind of at this point I'm actually enjoying myself because I've I've given up on it making sense or being written well or shot well i i just i just i like the craziness um then we get long scenes of so robert so robert's not a total piece he's a mostly a piece of shit but his his kind of thing that he's working towards is to build this new age battery um that doesn't work that he's been working on for a really long time and in the meantime melinda has to get a job from one of her friends uh, all the while being persecuted by, and I think Nicole, you and I laughed at this. June and Brenda, her sisters, and their two oh, husbands. The brat pack. And I don't know if you noticed it, Jess. Yeah, every time they show up, the four of them show up they together in the same. <laughs> like it's never just formation. one of them in a scene or a couple. <laughs> but like, but like, at one point in the movie, she's older Taraji P, and they knock on her door. Like you hear a knock on the door, and she opens the door, and all four of them are standing there, it's and like, they like walk in in unison. And I'm like, what? That all huddle together in that walk. <laughs> I know. I'm just like, are none of these their own? Pe-? Like literally, the four of them are like one. Well, character. one sister's like, nicer this... than the other. That's about it. I think the husbands yeah, are the same. I guess they're like a. 
they're like a three a four headed monster that has different personalities. <laughs> but they but they literally walk it like they come together at every like is there a scene where it's just one or two of them? I feel like all four of them are always they together. They even own a company. I don't know. Together. This is something all we four noticed. Of them are in the the moving company or the uh, distribution company together. Right. I don't. Do, do we get what kind of company? I mean, it's some sort of moving distrib. I, I don't really know what they're doing per se, but um, <laughs> so we get. <laughs> We get to the part when they're so they're older now. They're out of money. Uh, Melinda has to refinance the house. And at this point, I'm back on Melinda's side. I'm like, okay, Melinda's doing all this work. This guy should probably give up on a stupid battery. It's not working. Um, he needs to just get a job. And like at this point, I'm like, Melinda it makes sense to me. Um, we ha- we should also mention Robert after cheating on the girl at the beginning. He's been like not helpful, but he has he has been faithful as far as we know. We don't think there's any other any other um, cheating or adultery going on at this point. So he's he's just kind of a bum husband. And they get to the point where he gets a job with uh, the moving company, as as Nicole said. Well, they give him an ultimatum, and... like it's their decision that if it was basically was like if you don't come work for us. Taraji's gonna leave you. <laughs> like, they are making up. Their life. Right. <laughs> so we get we get the part where the mistress in the beginning, uh, and that's uh, Diana. Diana comes back, or is it? Yeah, it's Diana. Diana comes back into play. She has somehow, <laughs> through crazy coincidence, become an executive at the company <laughs> the guy is trying to sell the battery to. It's fate. Like it's fate. What? <laughs> like what? Kind of- like what kind of leap are you t- asking me to take that the exact person she needs? You know what? Does living that... in Delaware, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I feel like that is like a Delaware thing. Are they in Delaware? I know you're in Delaware. Are they in Delaware? <laughs> like, oh my god! Like he he's been bothering this one woman for years, and then that woman retires, and then who's her replacement? Oh, it's the one girl I had an affair with 20 years ago. <laughs> oh, it's so crazy! Like. I, I, I can take leaps in movie. That is fucking crazy. That is ridiculous. At no point do we even get the idea that she is executive, like, like if that's her career path, like, we don't get anything. She just is that personal. Well, there wouldn't be much story um, there if it wasn't her, so. No, it wouldn't work at all because it's just it's a plot that doesn't work. <laughs> but, um, so uh, before we go any further, there's definitely some the way things are shot here and some of the sound choices. Uh, so visual and sound wise, I'll, I'll Jess, I'll let you go on this one. What did you think of that? Um, I don't know. I don't think there was too much particular or unique visual and sound that made me want to like bring it up or have something I written down about it. Probably just give it. A two five. Um, there wasn't any crazy music or scenes that I really liked. Um, I think one of my favorite scenes is actually when she went through her craziness and she was like dancing in her room, like plotting her revenge <laughs> and drinking wine or something. Yeah, we get to that in the next like twenty ish minutes in the film or so, but that. But yeah, <laughs> we'll I don't think there was that. any really <laughs> music or sound that really stuck to me at all. <laughs> Nicole? <laughs> I think I'm going to speak for both Brendan and I a little bit on this, but um, I gave my visual and sound a resounding one. <laughs> okay. Okay. So to, to, to begin here, uh, there's this lovely... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you, be- before you get into this, we should preface, Nicole, even in what we all consider really good movies, is always looking for details and continuity errors that don't It's not work. that I'm Constantly. looking for them, per se. It's that they just show you up. You look for them. There's no... You... If, <laughs> if, if like, every little They're visual eyesores. thing would bother... If okay, someone picks ahead, up a glass ahead. and they put it back down and it's full again, I'm gonna fucking notice it, okay? That didn't happen in this movie, but in anything. <laughs> So, a couple things here. Not much worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, as we're watching this, there's a scene where the young couple is walking, like, down the, um, I don't know, next to, like, a, a river or something um, on a little boardwalk. And I swear to God, this is a this is a green screen, okay? They're moving and nothing is moving behind them. And you can see <laughs> the, the light from the overhead lights on her on her hair you can see it it's just horribly shot it's <laughs> horrific oh my 
it it really is very noticeable. It looks like the camera's just kind of swaying back and forth. But no, one makes no me watch that part again. You need to need watch it again that. because you're you gonna probably do. It's in the there's, they're just imposed in there. It's in the first half hour when they're younger. And yeah, it looks like the camera's going back and forth, but nothing's really getting further away. And there is a light <laughs> constantly above above oh Melinda's head, and it doesn't no, move. No <laughs> it's sounds always in the that background same of like a bird calling or something. Like no no water rushing, nothing. Like it's just silence. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's all right. It's that's noticeable. number one. Number two. We have the scene where they're getting married, okay, they're in the church, and she's all upset because her sisters didn't show up, and if you watch this scene carefully, I remember it's the left-hand side of the pews in the church, first off, there's (laughs) zero people in there, okay, then they pan out a little bit, there's one guy sitting there, and then all of a sudden, the church is fucking packed, okay, where did these people come from? There was no (laughs) time lapse. (laughs) All between her walking down the middle of the aisle to up on the thing like <laughs> what we're supposed to believe in 20 seconds that like the whole place went from oh one guy alone God. on the oh right hand God. side to, a full, yeah, I have, I have to like three full rows I have of people <laughs> i got one too in I, case, I, if I you don't hit it so. so i can't remember exactly what part of this it must have been a flashback but later on in the movie and they're walking on that same pier boardwalk thing, but it's daytime, and... Yep, this is the same one I had. <laughs> also completely green screen, because when they sit down to talk at the bench, the bench is just in the middle of the sidewalk, <laughs> and it's not even facing the, the water or anything. It's literally plopped in the middle of the fucking <laughs> sidewalk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite. Oh my the bench God. is not. It's sitting God in the very smack dab. <laughs> it's in the smack dab middle of this, like of this probably like fifteen foot wide walkway. It's just right in the middle, and it's facing the camera. It's not facing the water. It's just facing <laughs> towards more pavement. Unfortunately, like, <laughs> I started to lose a little bit of. Uh, um, interest in watching the end, so I don't know how well those water underwater scenes were shot and everything when she was in there, but those were not okay. bad. Those but were okay. From what I remember, from this, it was just it was pretty poor. Yeah, it probably wasn't well uh, thought out. <laughs> it definitely no. Wasn't. I and I said to the call, I'm like, this was shot in three days. This was shot in a weekend. <laughs> like this, this has like five locations. <laughs> And that's probably part of the reason why that group of four travels as a pack of four. Because like, all right, we hired these guys for one day, so let's just let's just get all their scenes out here together. Like, it, it's completely. Oh I'm giving it a one. I'm giving it a one five, just because I do like. I think the, some of the scenes at the end, which is some of the worst part of the movie as far as plot and characters go. The scenes are better at the end. Um, not everything. When that, when she, at the very end, there's a scene where there's blood splattering, and oh my lord, it is the worst. It looks like Catch it up. looks like um, <laughs> those like cheesy fan no, not, movies. Yeah, yes, it it seems like it's like that fake CGI blood splatter you would use in like a uh, movie with like a thousand dollar budget, <laughs> like really, really poor, uh, absurdly poor, but. Um, yeah, the drowning scene's not bad at the end. Uh, when she's going crazy and drinking to herself, that's at least attempting to be artistic in a way. So I give it a little bit of points for that. But yeah, it's it's full of continuity errors and uh, unmemorable sounds. And, I mean, they, they play a lot of Nina Simone. So if you like that, I mean, maybe they'll give you some extra points. Um, so, so back to the plot, uh, in quotations. Um, they split up. Melinda wants to split up from Robert. This is her decision. Um, and it's because Robert gets a meeting to present his battery. They offer him $800,000. A guy who has not had a job in like 20 years. And he's been working on a failed battery. They give him $800,000 and he says no. A battery he dug out of the trash. Literally, we saw him take it from the Who's pile of trash. Dash? This is why I don't take like it to that this guy. Meeting. Who does that? I know. So... He turn like they turn they turn him down, and or he turns them down. He tells Melinda and the family, and that's the last straw. Melinda dumps him, and they get into a f- like a fight in the yard, and everyone's pulling everyone apart, and it's <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, so then Robert 
is out of the has basically homeless. Diana, the the woman who he had an affair with twenty years before and is also the executive at this thing that got him the meeting, is, invites him to stay with her. <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, so then this is about an hour and a half in the movie, then we get a title come across the screen, Sunder. And I'm like, what's Sunder? What? Well, they give you the Apparently, this the movie title. is. <laughs> yeah, and they give you the definition because I doubt, you know, it's uh, to split. Uh, I to think this apart. brings in more so, of the playwright aspect of, of him, of Tyler Perry, and how he's making different acts, it seems, and using these crazy ass words that nobody knows. It does. And, and it's. um. It's a good concept that makes no sense in its execution because we get acrimony at the beginning. We think it's just the title of the movie with the definition. I wasn't thinking it was some five-chapter structure. And we don't get the next chapter until like an hour and 15 minutes into the movie. (laughs) And then we just get Sunder. And then I'm like, oh... We're still doing this. <laughs> like this, like this is this is part of the movie, and it's not the only one. We get three more. We get bewail and deranged and ex- and exorb- <laughs> inog- you can't say. inexorable, inexorable. We get three more, and they're all about 10, 15 minutes what long the because fuck? you know acrimony was over half the movie. Acrimony and so, friends. <laughs> Yeah, acrimony and friend. Acrimony and the four people who travel on a path. Acrimony. Um, the friend. So we get Robert all of a sudden gets called back to the meeting, and they're like, all right, you didn't want the $800,000? Fine. We'll buy your product for multi billion yeah, dollar oh. deal. Multi- <laughs> a multi billion dollar deal. He went from, uh, you are a good negotiator, Robert. We're going to, you know, we're going to let you keep the rights and sign you to this crazy, ludicrous amount of money deal. This guy who has had no See money what happens the whole movie. When you stop and think about your actions first, you can make billions in like 30 See, minutes. There's, you know, there's some residents you have with this movie. <laughs> See, you can't. You cannot do that. There's no planet in the world where the, any of this planet happens. Planet Tyler Perry. This is a guy who definitely has no idea how any business ever works. Because that is... Ext- Alright, whatever. Um, speaking of feel and resonance, let's just go into that because we're here. Uh, Nicole, feel oh, and resonance. No. <laughs> um, I gave it like a two, kind of. Um, I liked the... <laughs> I kind of liked what we are dis- what we discussed in the sense that in the beginning, you feel bad for her because she's been cheated on, and then you feel bad for him because she's starting to go a little crazy. They, it just goes back and forth. You feel bad for her again when he um, is go- it has left her life for a while and then makes all this money. I feel bad for her because she fucked up. But, uh, you know, that... that- Emotion back and forth is really the driving force of this hard two right here. Everything else I just thought was so hysterical. <laughs> this is hard too. <laughs> so poorly written and poorly shot. And the writing was so cliche. Uh, the, the four pack. <laughs> I'm dying at the four pack. Like I can't. Four pack. <laughs> and two sisters and their husbands. And the things that they say are so stereotypical. If my sister ever said that, she would be like, you're fucking weird. Like, don't say it to me. Did you, did you notice they talk in a one, two, three format? The, 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 the loud sister goes, then her husband goes, yeah. And then the other husband goes, and he's like, you should just listen to him. And the fourth one goes, please, it's for your own good. Like they, get to, like, they start with the most abrasive, and they work their way to the nice sister. And they always go in that order when they're but, talking. Yeah, and then when you get later on into the the final uh third i would say uh and you're starting to feel good about the guy's life and how he's living he's finally made something for himself and taking the people that he thinks should be there with him and then you know taraji comes in all all huff and puff and like that and uh it just i can't i don't like that like i didn't like the last third because it was just so i mean i get that's the whole point of this but it was really, it was really <laughs> dumb. Uh, like they, he bought her a yacht, so they're on the yacht. 
and they're living large after their wedding day. And somehow, I don't even know how she knows where the fuck they are. Hold on, hold on. We got a oh. lot. We have a lot of good stuff. Oh. We have a lot of gems. Okay, well then, let, let, me, let me hold that. <laughs> I, back I have been then. saving some stuff because right because right now we're at the point we're at the point where they split up and Robert got his big contract. Oh. We have not. We haven't even seen her well, in spiral you know yet. We, we're gonna... this then, yeah. Well, maybe I That's asked right. a little bit early, I still but um, it yeah. I feel like you <laughs> need to understand my feel. You need to explain um, her story behind it. All right, so it. before we get to before my we get to Jess's residence, my premature feel, overall feel and may my, have changed. No, that that that's that's yeah, that's my bad. I I, I may have introduced that too early. So <laughs> let's uh, let's back up <laughs> to uh, their splitting up. Robert's got money. Robert comes to Melinda's office and. As penance for costing, and I think they said in the movie like one point three million dollars, something like that, over the course of their marriage between the house and bills and the three hundred fifty thousand she got the life insurance. It was like a, it was like a million, mm-hmm. one point three million, something like that, right? So he shows up at her office, gives her flowers, gives her a check for ten million dollars, and on top, bought the he house just back. accrued ten million dollars in what is this like less than like for six months? Because he is now, uh, yeah, a hundred millionaire, billionaire, whatever. He's mad wealthy, and so as penance, he is given her for her time, basically ten million bucks plus her home back. Um, and we, and then this is when we get to bewail. She is mad. How dare he leave her? Even though she is the one who <laughs> did the divorce. <laughs> And she yells at her family, who's like, "Oh, at least we have money now." And and then they, she yells at them, and and uh, she's drinking. And this is just the part Justin's talking about. Um, she's like thrashing her room. And there's weird scenes of her like dancing by herself and like, <laughs> that's dark, my and, like a dark scene. In, in like a dark room. That's like and I think Nicole mentioned this when we watched it. It's like red, like the curtains are red, but like the light is red somehow. Like I don't know if that's really how it was, or that's just how we're supposed to feel. Um, and all the while, De- uh, Deanna becomes Robert's fiance, and they live in this real nice apartment penthouse thing that's got like it's the most stereotypical rich person ha- like penthouse you could think of. Um, so ten million dollars for the penance. This is where I'm. <laughs> I'm back on Robert's side. If I'm, why? That's enough for me. If I if I'm Melinda <laughs> after all this time. <laughs> And my ex is not good, but not particularly not good. Just like, like didn't get a job and tried to achieve their dream, but sucked at it and at, at, at my expense. But she didn't cheat on me since that one time when we were like 20. That's, it's not like he was being, he was cheating on her for mm-hmm. years and years. It was that one time Once a long a cheater, time ago. Always a cheater. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'll let you guys, I'll, what are you guys' opinions here? Cause at this point I'm back on Robert's side cause he's given her, like seven times what she owed her, like, and she's now got a, her old house back, which is what she wanted, and ten million dollars. I'm happy. I'm shut up. I'm done. Like, I, if I'm her, I'm done. What do you guys think? Yeah, Team Melinda. <laughs> I, I'd still be. <laughs> I would still be mad. You're still on her side. You okay? Yeah. yeah, because I'm sorry. You, you in real life, are you doing this? If your ex is exa- if you're in Melinda's spot with your okay, ex, okay, I wouldn't and they give you go ten million dollars in a house. I would still be mad because all the, this is her entire life of just picking up the pieces and him making all these promises and then watching like all your dreams that you've dreamt of with him like being given to another. What girl. were her dreams? What did she want to do other than this? She wanted to have kids. The reason she doesn't have kids is because she rammed her car into his trailer over and over again until her ovaries broke. Well, he cheated on her. <laughs> oh well, he cheated on her, so that's. So she's I'm not saying throw it's justified to do that. I'm saying that that's just her reason, and more of so, that's her reason that <laughs> she blames on him because if he never cheated on her, she wouldn't have been that angry. But oh I don't know. Dear. No, I feel her rage because he's been promising this her entire life. That's all she's been hearing, and now when it's finally here, he gives it to the girl from the beginning that. Uh, you because she divorced him, he didn't even divorce her. Well, no one thought it's that. It's all her was fault to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, so she. It's like all right. So she 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 bought a stock when it was too high. It depreciated in value. She sold it when it was worth a penny, and then it became a. Then it became. Apple. Yeah, it was a very well, very that, small that's her, percentage. That's her fault. It is, but I'm. I'm not saying it's not her fault, but I'm saying I understand why she'd be mad. I think if I was her, I'd probably, um, you know, just 
take what I was given from him and, and call it a loss and call it a day. Like, uh, you know, I think it's wrong that he cheated on her too. And how stupid is he that when she at one point finds like, um, the wallet from the CEO or whatever of the company, why doesn't he just fucking say that it's because his battery is getting, uh, purchased like why doesn't he speak up i don't understand why he doesn't lack of character development that that would have saved her so much grief (laughs) and that would have saved her so much of this like anger that she built up at at this part in her life um but i think she really took it a little too far i mean i get the whole thing i would be i would never trust him again i would never marry him to begin with but whatever i just Maybe if we saw him be abusive, like, physically, or even... I mean, he wasn't even verbally abusive. He didn't really say anything to her, like, a crazy... Like, he didn't do anything. All he ever did was... He didn't do anything at yeah, all. Yeah, that's no, the he, point. He literally just did nothing. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I want to... Because I like, want to be on her side. <laughs> yeah, she want, he wanted the money, but, like... Like, it's not like he... He wasn't malicious at all, and he and he cheated the once. I'll give you that. But it was when they were fucking... It, they're literally teenagers. They were in college, and then since then, he hasn't. He has been completely faithful. And she's the one who initiated the... I just... I want to be on her side more, because through the whole middle of the movie, I'm on her side again, because he's a bum. But he's not a particularly evil bum. He's not trying to do anything bad. He's trying to make the battery work, and it just isn't. And he's not... It just... Her... her she just seems malicious and vindictive... To someone who didn't who didn't mean to do anything to her, he I didn't want he didn't want it to worn be worn out. And when he says like "I still love you" in the last couple scenes, I believe him. I think he, I don't think he wanted it to go this way. I don't know. No, but the fact that it did, I, I'm on I'm on his side for the most of this. I'm on her side at the at the very first time you decline the offer because she put so much of her life and time into helping him and then all of a sudden he comes home and says he turned down eight hundred thousand dollars yeah I all right all right i'll give you that that's that's i'll give you the eight hundred thousand all right so so we've we've made our sides clear on how we feel about the character motivations at this point um so she starts acting out she does she wants to destroy the other woman's wedding dress and instead of you know pouring food dye or into the into the bag or whatever, she pours hydraulic acid, <laughs> and it causes smoke. And immediately oh, they have to go to court because it's obvious that she's just, like if you want to destroy the dra- thing, do it discreetly. But no, she doesn't. So there's like bur- it's like on f- basically burning with acid, <laughs> and everyone notices in the store when she just like walks in and walks up to the bag and pours it in there. I mean, just use food dye. So Pour a bunch of red food dye. What in a there. weird choice that he made for how she was going to do this. <laughs> it really was. It's, I mean, I guess it fits everything else over the top and nonsensical and, you know, nothing any real human would ever do, but all right, fine. She does that. She gets the restraining order and now now we're at the part at the end. Now we're on where where um Robert and Diana are on their boat, their yacht. Um they're celebrating their marriage and uh somehow Taraji P's uh Melinda has snuck on the boat. Um, Nicole, you could take it from here. <laughs> no, I didn't pay attention to this part. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about it earlier. This oh, is the part yeah. you want to I talk mean, about. No, I just thought it was so far fetched that at this point, like Taraji has no, I, like, how does she know where this boat is even going away from? Like, I don't know how she even found it. Does it have a GPS on it? Like, I don't understand how she. <laughs> no, it makes no sense. How, how does she find it? Okay, she really she, did. It, like appear out of nowhere. Yeah, she just <laughs> found it. Okay, she found a gun and was able to purchase this gun or find it from somebody and get on this boat and <laughs> go and try to kill him. Her. Both. Whatever. It was both. just really <laughs> weird. She's gonna shoot the whole crew if they don't jump over. So she's threatening everyone with a gun and they, they, she's like, psycho crew, mode. jump overboard. Yeah, she shoots Robert. He's bleeding out, which again, continuity errors. When he's falling down the stairs, there's no blood. And then all of a sudden he's covered in blood. Whatever. We don't, we'll we skip over that. Um, he's going to shoot Diana, but Robert gets in the way. I don't even remember how he does it. He's like, get in the dinghy. They have a little dinghy attached to the to the yacht. And go get the crew out of the ocean. And then Is that what she Taraji did? I thought she went for help. See, maybe I missed a part of this. Her help was to go dig the crew out of the ocean because they all jumped overboard because Taraji had oh, okay. them. She was able to lift them out herself. What the fuck? Well, <laughs> that's actually some plot. That, no, it wasn't. It was already in the, in the water. It was sitting there, which is not how a, a dinghy. No, I mean like the people work. 
No, they all jumped over because she threatened them with a gun. I know. How did she help them out of the water? I wouldn't be able to help somebody out of water. Oh, I don't know. They were gone for a while. Uh, Melinda was monologuing to dying <laughs> Robert. So, um, so Melinda, and this is where we get that lovely CGI where she takes, what is it, an axe? I don't where'd she get the axe? There's probably one somewhere. Sure, why not? <laughs> um, uh, and she chops into him. I don't even know if she takes a limb, but she chops in him, and we get the terrible CGI blood splatter that looks horrible, like it was made on iMovie. And uh, <laughs> just terrible. And, uh, she get the, the. I can't remember if she gets trips on the anchor line no, or if Robert her. kicks it. Does Robert do something? Does he kick it or does he? It just does he fell. It just, just fell. Karma just did it for her. <laughs> okay, so it's not even a Robert getting his last revenge. Nah. It's, it's just coincidence. Sure, and uh, the the yeah the karma yeah and the the chain wraps around her feet. It falls into the water. The anchor does, and it pulls her under. And we see one of the few actually good looking shots in the movie. She's drowning in the water, and she's in the wedding dress that she claims was supposed to be hers i thought it was destroyed with acid guess not maybe they got a replacement um and and so she's <laughs> drowned so she dies i noticed it was a different was... one yeah okay yeah yeah you noticed the detail so at least that, <laughs> that's a correct detail and um the diana comes back in the little boat with the crew that she pulled out of the water all eight of them or whatever and um they try to help robert by putting their hands up to their head and running around the boat, kind of. <laughs> and uh, that's that's the end of the movie. That is how we end. Uh, Melinda is dead on the anchor. Robert is possibly dying, and Diana is holding Shook. him as the crew runs around the boat. Um, so wow. now we can circle back around to that residence and feel, Jess, what do we got? <laughs> okay, so yeah, I am on Team Melinda, but what she did was very, very obscure. But it's all, I don't know. I think I can understand her rage. I can't under, really relate to her anger because I don't have anger or rage like that. But I don't know. Uh, at you're that like point, one of the most chill people ever. <laughs> yes. But at that point, I think that's just like pure comedy and just to make an audience have a reaction. And it definitely did that. I did not expect the last fourth of the movie to go that way. I think that was kind of the thriller behind the movie, which the first three fourths was no thriller whatsoever. I think it was just a thriller because there was blood and a gun. But, yeah, that came out of nowhere. It seemed like an entirely different movie just got pasted on there. (laughs) So bizarre. But, you know, it is what it is. It's the kind of movie it is, and you have to enjoy it and laugh about it. Yeah. Um, So I'm going to give... Yeah, I'll give this resonance a feel like a a 1, 5, 2, I don't know, something like that. It's because for the first 30 minutes, I did laugh a lot. I was... But not because it was good, because it was so bad. And I, but I, I, I wanted to keep that energy up, keep that like s- absurd. T- it's taking itself seriously, but it's definitely not good you energy. You wanted a Tyler really Perry room. Yeah, I wanted the room, but Tyler Perry or or because I there's a lot of really bad movies that I like because they're so bad they're fun to watch. And I was at the beginning I had hope that this would be one of those. Um, then it got kind of boring. Then it got absurd again, but no longer funny absurd. Just I can't overlook the because it, it was when the boring parts were going. It actually kind of made sense as a movie, so it was tonally incorrect. It was motivations are wrong. The plots all over the place, and by the end of it, I don't. I mean, I just wanted it to be over. I didn't care what happened. I, I and, totally got to that point too. Like I said, I really didn't pay much attention to that last boat scene where she's getting wrapped around the anchor and everything i just really lost me and yeah i just it was the it was it was there for a while there are parts in here that are like so nothing's good i should preface pretty much nothing's good like very (laughs) few like a few minutes in the movie are actually good filmmaking but like there's a couple there's a good amount of time where it's so bad it's good and then there's a lot of time where it's it's like the dirt it's boring and like i don't care (laughs) um but yeah, I mean, Feel and Resonance, 1-5, I think. Just mm. not enough there to, to hang on. But um, we're at the end here. I'm going to start with Jess, the the kindest on this movie. Uh, would you ma- recommend Acrimony? Um, only if you are like Tyler Perry movies. I think you kind of know the, kind, the theme of his movies and the style he goes for. So if you like that overly dramatic 
Um, just get a really good big kick out of it kind of movie, then you should watch it. If you're looking for something that's really meaningful with a well thought out plot, this probably isn't for you. <laughs> <laughs> if you want your movie to have a well thought out plot, this is not the movie. If, yeah, for if you, you want just like a stupid movie and want a stupid laugh, then go and just watch this one. But if not, if you really want to think about something, don't watch this. <laughs> Mm-hmm. All right, Nicole. What do we got? Well, I feel duped, honestly. Like, like I said, when I <laughs> when I watched that trailer, I was like, "Oh, this is gonna be good." Like, Tyler Perry can write a good thriller. I'm real excited for this. And does he have any other movies that are like considered thrillers? He's got other dramas. He's um, more, yeah, I, I mean, I guess I. Was, he's got stuff that's not Medea. He's got stuff that's yeah, not. Just yeah, I was expecting broad, something broad like. Comedy yeah, family. I was expecting something yeah. real interesting and well thought out and thought provoking, and this was just not that whatsoever. And I, I unfortunately can't recommend this in the sense of exactly like Jess said. If you're looking for something with great meaning, and it's not just some like ridiculous revenge story of some woman that's way over the top like it's over the top and not in not in a good way so unfortunately i'm gonna have to give this one a pass yeah and see i, I went in hope i had expect not expectations but i had hope i had hope <laughs> that because it because it looked different tarashi Panson's like a real actress that's not just rant like a rando um and i and i, I was and i know Basically, Tyler Perry from the Medea movies. I know he does a lot of... He's prolific. He has a lot of movies out there that are not uh, Medea. But this one looked... And when it came out last year, I, I didn't catch it in theaters. But th- it looked like a a real movie. And uh, at, at the beginning, immediately it became clear that it was not going to be a good real movie. Um, but then it was kind of absurdly funny. And then it just got boring. And when it gets boring, it just... That's the death nail. It can be it can be terrible, but it can be good terrible. And I, I want it to just be good, good. But by the end, it it, it just wasn't enough of anything. It was it was not a uh, it, it was not it's not a recommend. Um, and I really was hoping I would come in and be like, you know what, Tyler Perry gets a bad rap, but this is a good movie. And you know, like he can he actually can make a good movie. Maybe he can. This is not it. Um, <laughs> not a Maybe recommend. Try, yeah, with something for me. else. So, so one one light recommends, two not recommends for acrimony. Um, so that's that's that one. And uh, coming down the pike, we've got a couple more streaming reviews coming out next week. Um, then we've got the big one, uh, Avengers Endgame. Um, got a lot of movies in May and June. A lot of theater movies in May and June. If uh, you guys want to want us to review something specifically, though, uh, Facebook at Films with a Woman in My Life. Uh, Twitter at Films Woman Pod, and I am Brennan underscore pod host on Instagram. Uh, do you guys have anything else to add before we close out the show? No, I'm excited uh, for the next ones. Yeah, probably just that Tyler Perry movies probably shouldn't be scored on the way that we rate movies. <laughs> <laughs> No, if we curved it, well, that's the thing. If I had seen, if I know more Tyler Perry movies and I could curve it, you know. It's like it's like bad action hero movies from the action movies from the eighties. Like they have yeah. their own scoring system, or like disaster movies from the late nineties, early two thousands. Like they have their own scoring system because they're their own thing. You can't really you can't compare this to like, the fucking Godfather. Like it's, <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's a it's a yeah it's a different like like this guy still animal. has a job and he has tons of movies out so there is an audience that appreciates it but you just can't go into the nitty-gritty because you're gonna find a lot of holes <laughs> yeah but so does dennis dugan who's the guy who does like joe dirt <laughs> and and the and like the, the all the adam sandler movies that are horrible like you, i mean just because you have a career doesn't there's mean a market for everyone <laughs> exactly <laughs> I suppose. I just, yeah, I was hoping for some crossover. But, um, all right. Well, thanks, guys, for being on. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Jess. Thank you, Nicole. And until next time, everybody, this is Brennan signing off saying, enjoy your movies. Thanks for listening to Films with the Women in My Life. If you enjoyed being a listener in our life, subscribe to us on iTunes. Please leave a review as it helps more people find the show. Like us on Facebook at Films with the Women in My Life. Follow us on Twitter at Films Women Pod and check out our website, filmswiththewomen.libsyn.com. That's filmswiththewomen.libsyn.com. 
Original music for the show was created by Ian Burke. Original artwork created by Nicole D'Alessio. This show is produced by Brennan Snyder. Thank you again for listening and enjoy your movies.